What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. I am here in Park City, Utah. If you saw my last video, you saw that I announced that I'm moving here um, until further notice. I basically just bought a one-way ticket. I don't have really a plan of when I'm going to either go back to New York or leave here. I really don't know. I just have a one-way ticket here and we're gonna see just what happens. So last video I did um, introduced the fact that I had been struggling with hypothalamic amenorrhea for about eight months now. I just kind of wanted to still open up the conversation and be more open with you guys and just kind of share what I have been going through and kind of my journey moving forward with this whole thing. So I wanted to sit down and share with you guys how I developed HA and the signs and symptoms that I was experiencing. So just a little quick debriefing. I went over this in my last video, but just in case you missed it, in case you don't know what HA is, it is basically when your body stops menstruating for a couple of different reasons usually has to do with three primary factors so one if you're over exercising two if you're under eating or three just if your body is in a really state of chronic high stress usually it's a case of all three a little trifecta and what a lot of people don't really realize is that like under eating and overeating are both a stress on the body and you know extreme exercise and also being extremely sedentary is also stressors on the body as well so basically again what happens with HA is that your body kind of shuts down for lack of a better term I feel like that makes it sound very extreme but it's kind of what happens shuts down your reproductive system in a sense in order to help support other fu functions of your body and another thing which I feel like is a big misconception is that people think that you need to be like anorexic or extremely extremely underweight or need to be like training for the Olympics in order to develop HA which really is not true it really just comes down to if those three pillars are out of balance in one way or another other causing stress on your body it really can happen to almost anybody and it's honestly is extremely common so in my case I wasn't underweight I wasn't technically too low of a BMI I still was technically a healthy weight and that's also why my gynecologist wasn't like too nervous about it so back to the topic at hand I'm gonna try to run through a little timeline quickly um, I have it jotted down here so hopefully I'll stay on task so this really all started when I went to study abroad in Spain so I was just in Spain this past semester for the second semester of my junior year of college I was living with a host mother so I didn't really have control over my meals it's not like I was in an apartment so I was kind of just being fed whatever she was feeding me and if you are an OG and did watch my vlogs from when I was in Spain um, I'm gonna put the clipping because I vividly remember saying I don't even know what I'm eating I just I'm living off of like vegetables and beans. She really never eats meat, so I don't really ever eat meat. And she doesn't even cook fish. I don't even know. And I, I eat like eggs, vegetables, and like pasta. It's like what I eat. She didn't even eat a lot of meat. And the only like fat sources that I was eating was like her olive oil. Like we never really had fatty fish. Um, there wasn't really any nuts or seeds or anything like that. No avocado. This, I feel like this is also gonna sound bad on her end. I absolutely loved my host mom. Like she was amazing. I never like felt super, super hungry. I think that just so much changed. My body didn't really register that I wasn't eating that much. Also keep in mind, my training was very decreased as well. However, I was walking a ton because I was in Europe. So it was like 20,000 steps a day. And I'm assuming I probably was eating around like a thousand calories a day. So regardless of my activity level, I think just simply the very drastic slash in calories and the change in what I was eating really affected my body and kind of really kick-started HA to start to develop. So I came back home and again, when I was in Spain, I definitely was not taking my training very seriously, but when I did come home, I started to take my training very seriously. I had very clear training goals. This whole summer was kind of a very big dieting down phase. I got very lean, the leanest I've been in a really long time. I was slowly decreasing my calories. So again, I was constantly in the caloric deficit for the most part. I was still lifting heavy I had incorporated high intensity interval training and circuit training so very intense training sessions about five times a week I would say which would have been fine I just don't think it was complementing my current nutrition plan properly especially coming out of such a drastic change in diet to begin with when I was in Spain overall I don't think my training and what I was doing this summer is what caused me to lose my period because it genuinely wasn't. I had lost my period in February. So I think my diet in Spain is what caused HA to initially develop. And then I think that my habits during this past summer is what prevented my period from coming 
back because I didn't really give my body that cushion that it needed of extra calories, etc. So those are the factors that I think really affected this whole HA thing from developing, um, really essentially just kind of under eating, not eating enough calories, not eating enough healthy fats when I was in Spain, which that is really, really important to hormone health and hormone regulation, which I knew of that. I just didn't know like it affected it that much. So please learn from me and know that fats are not bad for you. Healthy fats are crucial and imperative for you to incorporate into your diet. And then I think finally was this summer of my really intense training. I got into a really, really athletic state and was just working on my all around athleticism with not a proper diet to be able to supplement that training routine coming back from Spain. So with all that being said and that whole timeline, I wanted to share with you guys the symptoms that I'd been experiencing as well. So nothing was too pressing. Like overall, I did feel very good, but these symptoms were definitely noticeable to me, but they just weren't very like overwhelming to the point where I couldn't function. You know what I mean? So the first thing that I really, really experienced, especially in Spain was hair loss. And I think that goes back to because I really was not eating like my fat intake was so, so low. And specifically my omega-3 intake was so, so low. I think that really caused a lot of my hair to fall out. And then the second thing, which I think was the second biggest one was low libido for sure. Um, just in general, like my sex drive was definitely decreased, which is no fun. And third one was actually difficulty sleeping. Um, I kind of was like, restless at night like I felt like I was like constantly wired all the time which again I just thought like I was like I'm feeling so good I have so much energy when like kind of looking back I feel like that wasn't really a good thing like I feel like being wired was a better way to describe it as opposed to me feeling like I just was really high energy you know what I mean I just felt like I wasn't getting into a deep sleep at night and like in the I would wake up like no alarm no nothing at like six o'clock six thirty seven o'clock every morning like no alarm and when I'm telling you guys I would wake up like like I could hop right out of bed. Like I wasn't groggy. I literally would just wake up and like could sit out of bed. I was like, okay, like I felt like it was noon already when I woke up. Like I'm telling you, it was really bizarre. And then the last thing was definitely increased anxiety. And I know this kind of seems like how is that connected, but I definitely was struggling with a little bit more anxiety throughout the summer and even kind of now. And like, again, when I was researching kind of the effects of estrogen deficiency, it definitely can increase the effects of depression and anxiety. So that's definitely not really depression, but anxiety I definitely have noticed. So yes, that's everything I wanna talk about in this video. I kind of just like hope with this like little teeny mini series I'm gonna be doing with this, I just hope it like raises and opens up the conversation about hormone health because I feel like that's so, like I knew nothing about this really before this happened and like hormones are the backbone to like literally the function of the human body. Like I feel like it's a second brain. Hopefully I'm like inspiring you guys the importance of taking care of your hormone health and just like again, how much it actually does affect. Hormone health helps indicate overall health which is what we want and is what I'm really trying to work on now. I don't know when exactly my next video is going to be up about my HA journey, but I already have some video ideas, but I feel like I wanna wait a little bit more until, again, I'm a little bit further along this recovery process before I share with you guys. So, that's it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm sending you guys so much love. Thank you guys for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.